everybody, I'm Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to, how to remove the air out of your boiler. You know, when you have the, the hot water baseboard heat, when you have the water running through it, and you get the air, and it's making a lot of noise, banging, or you did some kind of work and you need to remove the air. I'm going to show you well, just how to do that on this system. Now, keep in mind, uh, plumbers can plumb it differently in different systems, but basically they're all the same, okay? Now, first thing you need to know, especially when you have banging in the system, which can be a result of uh, you don't have enough water in there, it can also be though, if you have an expansion tank. Now, like anything, when you heat it, it expands. Now, like the water in your system, <clears throat> well, when it heats up, it's gonna expand. Well, where's it gonna go? It can't go anywhere. You don't wanna break a pipe. So we have an expansion tank, and basically what this is, it's half air, half water. It has a rubber bladder in the middle of it, say. If you tap on it, you can hear the difference, okay? Up on top, you should hear more of a thud. That's the water in there. Not much, but you have it in there. Now, down lower, you ha it's just empty air space. So it's a bladder in there, so when the water expands, it pushes it down instead of blowing out a pipe and making all kinds of rackety noises, okay? So make sure that you do hear that. They're not that expensive. They're very uh, easy to replace. Basically, on this one, spin it off, spin a new one on, okay? All right, now, uh, one more thing you need to know. A, a boiler means water. A furnace is hot air, okay? So make sure you understand that. Well, you always need water coming into it. However, your city or well water, you can have 60 pounds of pressure, if not more. Well, your boiler and the heat going through the house, you don't want that much pressure. Okay, so you have a thing that's called a regulator, which is back here, so I'll get a better shot for, for you so you understand it. That regulates the pressure down to say about 12, 10 to 12 pounds, something along those lines. On the regulator, it will tell you a little tag on there, normally tell you what it's rated for. And you have the water coming in, which would also be on that side as well. And make sure that water valve is always on because you need a constant water supply to the boiler that once it needs some, that regulator valve, it just goes, just lets a little in at a time, okay? But here, this is important. Again, this is my system that I built like 13 years ago. <clears throat> we have a little purge valve up here. Now, this one is a little plastic screw and you know, we just leave it a little loose. You know, you don't want to tighten that down. Um, most systems have a cap that you would find on your, your tire of your, of your the air, to put air in your tire. A little cap that looks very similar to that, but it has a little hole on the side. A lot of people, they see that's loose when they're having problems, and they say, oh, that's the problem, they tighten it down. Well, you just made more problems for yourself, believe it or not. That's supposed to be loose. It's just a cap on there. It has a little Schrader valve inside, but if any air, comes into the system with this purge here, it, psh, 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 it lets the air out by itself a little at a time. But when you have a lot of air, like if you, I don't know, had a broken pipe and you fixed that, but now what do I do? Well, that's, I'm gonna show you how to remove that kind of air, a lot of air, okay? Well, on my system here, I have a five zone valves and I'm using zone valves and yours may not have that. Yours may have a, a circulator pump for each one. In this case, I only have one, pump, which will pump the water constantly around as a zone valve opens up and needs it. If you have a zone valve, that means you have a thermostat. Uh, I mean, per zone valve. In this case, it's a pretty big house, so five zones, five thermostats. Works pretty good. I also have a spigot. I only have one spigot. I don't have any, nowhere else on the zones or anything. Uh, you may have one per zone which is great because then you can just bleed that one by itself. I like to use the, the one spigot this way. I'm pretty much doing them all at the same time, but I, I'm only doing them if I open up the zone valve. Like in the summertime, you have your water hose outside to go water your grass, wash your car, whatever, and the hose is empty, and you turn that on and the water spits out. And then finally you get a nice flow. That's the same exact thing that we're doing here. Um, Fortunately, I don't have any air in this system, so uh, we're not gonna see any air come out, at least I hope not, for my sake, but we'll give you the whole idea of how it's done, okay? So, one thing you do need, uh, it's always, I mean, at least nice to have, keeps things a little clean, 
a hose. I have a simple hose off a washing machine. So if you don't have a, you know, you don't want to use a 50 foot hose. I mean, you just are not going to get the results that, that you want. Yeah, we remove it, but when are you going to know about it, okay? We're going to connect one end of this hose onto our spigot here, and the other end we're going to put into a five gallon bucket. I mean, if you're fortunate enough to have a, a drain hose, a drain line, right, in, by, right next to your boiler, okay. But I like to use a bucket because as a bucket fills up with water, I'll see any air in the system by the bubbling coming coming up through the water. It works out pretty good. Okay. So again, I got the hose onto my one spigot, or you can have multiple. You have to do it each time per zone. Okay. But let me open this up and we'll show you. Okay, I got my hose on in the bucket. Now the boiler is on. I don't know if the microphone I have you can actually hear, it, but it's on. It's working, and that's what I want. I want at least the electricity working for the zone valves, and the zone valve is open. Now, if you have this kind of zone valve, which a lot of houses do, you have a little lever on the side of it. You can actually move that over manually to open up that zone valve. But it's important that you make sure you turn that off. Otherwise, well, you're going to have a hot room. <laughs> I also have this valve that I, when I install this, it shuts the whole system down. But however, the water is coming in on this side, not the return side where my zone valves are, but the supply side. So I can actually turn this whole big valve off, which turns this whole branch dead. So any air is going to not go through the boiler, but it's going to come right out the way I designed it for it to come out. I mean, I've spoken to many different plumbers and they all have a different thought on how to remove the air efficiently. Well, pretty big house and gets done pretty quick. Works for me and all the other ones I've done. All right, so for, for right now, I'm gonna leave this on because it is the, it's heating my house. I don't wanna turn it off. Again, I'm just gonna turn this on and I'll give you a close up exactly what's gonna happen. And turn that valve on and see what we got. And I have I have a steady flow of water coming out. You can see the steam. Obviously, it's 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 hot. Okay, but I don't have any air in the system, and I pretty much know that. So I'm just going to turn it back off uh, for the sake the sake of it. You don't want to point out to to you on all boilers. You're going to have a gauge, Not a single round one usually, and we have two different gauges on it. The one in red. Let me give you a better shot of that. The one in red, in my case, is on the bottom. This is showing me the temperature of the boiler right now. Now, this would go up to the maximum set and down to the lowest that, that your, control your control box is set at. This is an important one, the one right here, so usually in blue. Now, if you look at it, it almost looks like it's down to nothing, but in fact, it's not. It's, it's right about 15 pounds of pressure. I don't know if I can get that good of a shot in there for you. Yeah, you can just about see that. Yeah, it's about 15 pounds of pressure in there. Well, that's important. That is the pressure in the pipes themselves, in, you know, for the, the water pressure. That's important that you take a look at that first, really before you get involved and in going crazy, because that's important. You have other, um, you know, it's just easier for me to tell you, call somebody that knows. Um, like I said, this is not my forte. Well, I hope you understand a little bit better and maybe you can take the air out of your system. One thing to remember when you when you turn that spigot on and if you don't get any air out right away, well, don't be discouraged. That has to run through that whole, that whatever zone that is, has to run through your whole entire house until that air comes out. It might be right away. Even if, even if it is right away, let it run for a while. Let it run for a while. And also do a little at a time. If you just open the whole thing up, well, your boiler normally can't fill up as fast as you're taking it out. So you don't want to do that. So, you know, maybe like 30 seconds at a time. Or, uh, I mean, there are other ways to work around it, but I don't want to get you in trouble, okay? So, anyway, I'm Dominic from AskMeDIY.com. Thanks for watching.